The next video of the next instalment for Cross Killing, we're up to chapter 3. In that same instant he fired both pistols. Travelling less than 30 feet, the bullet hit me so hard it slammed me backward. My head cracked off the concrete and everything went just this side of midnight, like I was swelling and draining down a black pipe before I heard a third shot and then a fourth. Something crashed close to me and I fought my way toward the sound, toward consciousness, seeing the blackness give way, disjointed and incomplete, like a jigsaw puzzle with missing pieces. Five, maybe six seconds passed before I found more pieces, and I knew who I was and what had happened. Two more seconds passed before I realised I'd taken the bullet square on the Kevlar that covered my chest. It felt like I'd taken a sledgehammer to my ribs and a swift kick to my head. In the next instant, I grabbed my gun and looked for. John Sampson lay sprawled on the floor by the sinks, his massive frame looked, looking crumpled until he started twitching electrically, and I saw the head wound. No, I shouted, becoming fully alert and stumbling over to his side. Samson's eyes were rolled up in his head and quivering. I grabbed the radio on the floor be beyond him, hit the transmitter and said, This is Detective Alex Cross. <clears throat> Ten zero zero. repeat, Officer Down, Munro Avenue and 12th, North East, St. Anthony's Catholic School Kitchen, Multiple shots, shots fired. 1052s needed immediately. Repeat, multiple ambulances needed. And a life flight for officer with head wound. We have ambulances and patrols on their way, Detective. The dispatcher came back. ETA, 20 seconds. I'll call life flight. Do you have the shooter? No, damn it. Make the life flight call. The line went dead. I lowered the radio. Only then did I look back at the best friend I've ever had. The first kid I met after Nana Mama brought me up from South Carolina. The man I'd grown up with, the partner I'd relied on more times than I could count. The spasm subsided and Samson's eyes lolled and he gasped. John, I said, kneeling beside him, taking his hand. Hold on now. Calvary's coming. He seemed to not hear. Just stared vacantly past me toward the wall. I started to cry. I couldn't stop. I shook from head to toe and then I wanted to shoot the man who'd done this. I wanted to shoot him twenty times, completely destroy the creature that had risen from the dead. Sirens closed in on the school from six directions. I wiped at my tears and then squeezed Samson's hand before forcing myself to my feet and back out into the cafeteria where the first patrol officers were charging in, followed by various EMTs whose shoulders were flecked with melting snowflakes. They got Samson's head immobilised and put him on a board and then a gurney. He was under blankets and moving in less than six minutes. It was snowing hard outside. They waded inside the front door to the school for the helicopter to come and put IV lines into his wrists. Samson went into another convulsion. The parish priest, Father Fred Close, came and gave my partner the last rites. But my man was still hanging on when the helicopter came. In a daze, I followed them out into the driving snowstorm. We had to shield our eyes to duck under the blinding propeller wash and get Samson aboard. We'll take it from here, one EMT shouted at me. There's no, not a chance I'm leaving his side, I said, climb climbing in beside the pilot and pulled on the extra helmet. Let's go. The pilot waited until they had the rear door shut and the gurney strapped down before throttling up the helicopter. We began to rise and it was only then that I saw through the swirling snow that crowds were forming beyond the barricade set up in a perimeter around the school and church complex. We pivoted in the air and flew back up over 12th Street, rising above the crowd. I looked down through the spiralling snow and saw everyone ducking their heads from the helicopter wash. Everyone except for a single male face looking directly up at the life flight not caring about the battering, stinging snow. That's him, I said. Detective? The pilot said his voice crackling over the radio in my helmet. I tugged down the microphone and said, How do I talk to dispatch? The pilot leaned over and flipped a switch. This is Detective Alec Cross, I said. Who's the supervising detective heading to St. Anthony's? Your wife, Chief Stone. Patch me through to her. Five seconds passed as we built speed and hurtled toward the hospital. Alex, Bree said, What's happened? John's hit bad, Bree, I said. I'm with him. Close off that school from four blocks in every direction. Order a door-to-door -door search. I just saw the shooter on 12th, a block west of the school. Description? It's Gary Sonergy, Bree, I said. Get his picture off Google and send it to every cop in the area. There was silence on the line before Bree said sympathetically. Alex, are you okay? Gary Sonergy's been dead for years. If he's dead, then I just saw a ghost. And that ends that instalment for Cross Kill.